Hey y'all, this is Donita. If you're new here, this is part two of the topic dance insecurities. So go ahead and pause it right here and go back to episode one if you haven't seen the first part. We covered a bit about our own insecurities as well as some initial thoughts about the topic. Today, Kevin and Kim and I want to continue that discussion further. So between us foos, let's talk about it. So, first question, do looks matter in dance? And if so, how much? <laughs> wow. I want to say it doesn't, but I think it kind of does. So, right? in my heart, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But in my brain, it does. Like, <laughs> does that make sense? So, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate reality. I think of the world a little bit. I mean, we're definitely on this trend of, like, breaking the norms and breaking the status quo. Um, so, but interestingly enough, it's it's the exception versus like a new norm and stuff where it's like, look at this um, heavy set dancer doing ballet, right? It's like, okay, but we're like sens sensationalizing it pretty much to be like something yeah. that's special versus something that is normal, normal. Is normal mm -hmm. and can be possible. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's just kind of my initial, my really initial thoughts on it is just like, um, we're getting there, we're getting better, yeah. but it's just, the reality of the situation is that it still very much matters mm -hmm. in order to be successful um, in that field. Um, I agree. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. He said it perfectly. <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, yes, not only here, but in the entertainment industry, I think it depends, right? Uh -huh. So maybe it depends. It's not so black and white. Um, unfortunately, it will matter because of entertain it you know and the how that whole system is built that's how you become successful but right. if you're only doing it for fun mm -hmm. <laughs> recreationally then no it doesn't yeah. you know what oh, I mean? definitely. so and that's what you want to think about mm -hmm. um in the entertainment industry first of all why like you know i think it's just society I, f I feel like if you think about it different countries media is different you know like um the british's media have different uh you know visual expectations mm -hmm. for for their actors and stuff versus yeah. hollywood you know what i'm saying right and unfortunately that's what it is mm -hmm. but i think it can be taken l like well if you think about like why you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like i i totally get what you're getting at like um i feel like i guess celebrities and other i guess um people of significance or whatever um do have to kind of maintain almost like a brand and a um like a persona and stuff and to be that role model and stuff and um a lot of people just look up to like, I guess a specific way, you know, that people look. It's like, it's that, I guess, for lack of a better way to compare it, like that Kardashian thing, where it's like, you know, like you're just like, oh, look how fabulous and rich and great mm -hmm. and beautiful that they are, that it's like, that it's like, that's what you want, right? Yeah. Um, and it because of that, it's so difficult for anyone who doesn't fit that mold to like break it, break through the industry without being a token or being the exception so mm -hmm. like i like i know so many people that i feel like w interestingly enough would be a lot further along in their career if they supposedly looked a certain mm -hmm. way or had a different swag and it's unfortunate but it's just like the reality of it something mm -hmm. as simple as like seeing a um a video on instagram like of a dancer let's say that it's someone in a tank top and pajamas right you wouldn't click it as as much just surface level because it's yeah. like that's not the fantasy or image that you're interested in so mm -hmm. it does play such a huge role in terms of if you're especially if you're pursuing dance into the industry and into like you know as a career like that's such a mm -hmm. huge part of it the way that you look and the way that you carry yourself and mm -hmm. you know we're again we're changing it we're <laughs> do, we're doing the best we can yeah baby steps um right now I, i'm thinking of video music video auditions and i'm sure how that like you know competitive that can be yeah and 
<clears throat> we haven't had any as a guest, but we know people have tried that, mm-hmm. pursued their career in LA because that's where all the promise is, and tell it, you know, had a wake up call because it's really tough. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You're compared, you're like held to a certain standard. You know, and why is that? It's because of, I feel like the consumers. Yeah. (laughs) Because consumers, like, they want certain, they watch certain videos because of what, like, people look like in them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, And as dancers, you know, it's tough. Um, If you ever want to be, like, a backup dancer for Janet Jackson, Mm -hmm. you know, or, like, Beyonce or whatever, Mm -hmm. I think, um, hopefully... Like, I don't have much knowledge of it, but hopefully it's changing a little bit. There's a little bit more inclusivity. One person that comes to mind is Paris Gobel. Mm. Mm. So I feel like she's leading a movement. <clears throat> you know, that new Justin Bieber yummy video that just came out. Um, <laughs> and her past work, too, with him. Um, like, she's changing, revolutionizing what the ideal video vixen looks like. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Definitely. So there's... We can look forward to more things like that but right now it does but good news is it doesn't here at our (laughs) studio you know what i mean (laughs) um you know and like i want to also explore like why sometimes looks matter like Mm -hmm. let's say in a dance team and you're making a set you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i think it's about a character you're trying to you're trying to make a character believable so let's say yeah. you're casting, I don't know, Kevin, you can speak about like the pieces you've created and like the people you've casted. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, I think bringing it back to just basics, like if it's a, a piece about women empowerment or like, you know, sass and stuff, it obviously is going to read on stage a lot better if it is all girls, right? Um, or if I guess you have this quote unquote gimmick where it's like all guys and they're doing a sassy piece, like it, it's kind of it's kind of a a thing that you think about because everyone has i guess their own contribution (laughs) in terms of just like who they are and like um how they carry themselves so it's like you kind of want to make sure that you take it full advantage of like of what they're able to offer to create the picture um so yeah like just at the basic base level like if it is um that kind of um piece or whatever I think about you know the gender just for for readability. Um, I know that I remember seeing a set uh, by Full Potential, mm-hmm. and I think it was like a lot of like uh, like issues in the world. Like that was kind of their theme and stuff. And Black Lives Matter was one of those um, one of those topics. And of course, you have to cast someone of African American descent because like it if it was anyone else, then it just feels wrong. You know, so there is an aspect of like the way that you look and you know every your attributes that does matter in terms of getting the right message across. So I believe in that, right? And you know, I think about that when I'm putting stuff together. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I can think of like we had an episode about females mm-hmm. in general. I would say I'm not gonna say it's harder out here (laughs) for females i would say that there's a lot of layers that are added when you are a female when you are in dance when you're in entertainment Mm -hmm. you know what i mean what about as males like is there certain expectations would you think you know i think it yeah um hmm. i mean it's kind of interesting i feel like i mean in general we're kind of in a male-dominated society Mm -hmm. i mean we're again getting better all that stuff because i feel like guys are actually a little bit more free to do whatever they want. You have, you know, your, your guys' heels teachers, you have your guys' sassy choreographers, you have your crumpers, you have, like, anything that guys do is normal, like, quote-unquote, and nowadays. Um, mm-hmm. So, but then when a girl, from, I, like, just from my perspective, when a girl does it, it's like, oh, that's unique. Like, that's new, that's different. A girl crumper, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and so it's like... Yeah, I don't, I don't, I haven't particularly felt that way in terms of being a guy, like, um, that something is wrong or different. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of unfortunate and unfair, but you know, that's life. (laughs) We're fixing it. (laughs) (laughs) 
So on that note, what can we do? What are some ways we can improve as a community um, to change this status quo? Yeah, I think support. Yeah. Just supporting everyone's, if they want to do it, like then let them do it. You know, and I think the more support that they have behind them, then the more normalized it becomes, the more people that believe in that particular um, stance, right? So um, if I do have someone that, let's say it's a, I don't know, like something as simple as like a, a transgender dancer or something, you know, like, like if they are pursuing it and stuff and want to do whatever they want to do, then we'll support it and let them do them, right? And then I think it becomes normal at that point if we're just like, yeah for sure like you know just like everyone else at our studio too like i i support our, all of our teachers and all of our students and stuff whenever they go up and stuff like to like challenge themselves they mm -hmm. they're awesome like and i'm just like yeah go like i don't even care at that point you know and it's like maybe we just we care by not caring you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah like um you know thinking about what videos you watch and why you watch them why this one is popular you know what i mean <clears throat> start mm -hmm. kind of like um giving less power to the media almost to like say this is what looks right or something like that you know what mm -hmm. i mean that's what comes to mind <clears throat> to me i feel like one of the things we could do um and this quote is from kevin's favorite person oh. RuPaul, <laughs> uh, like she always says, she always says, you know, if you don't love yourself, how, how the, the heck are you gonna love anyone else? You know what I mean? So it's like, yep. I feel like, how can we support the community if you can't even start within yourself? You know what I mean? Wow. So kind of tackle your own insecurities first, and think about like, don't judge yourself because at the mm. end of the day, the way you treat others is the way you treat yourself. Yeah. I feel like so, mm. you know, like go out there, be an example. Mm. Um, <clears throat> really tackle those like real status quo stuff and kind of like treat yourself basically love yourself you yeah. know and i think the more you do that the more it'll spread in the community mm -hmm. and then people will you'll people will just judge less yeah you know i think you also got to show love and share love not mm -hmm. only love yourself but love other people because i mm -hmm. feel like it's a hindrance for your own thing to to say like you know you shouldn't be doing that you suck you look terrible or whatnot because i feel like that's just your insecurities are just coming out as mm -hmm. well right and i feel like the best like kevin said is to support each other we can't have that crab mentality i don't know if you guys have ever heard it mm -mm. but it's like you have a bucket of crabs right and one crab is trying to escape and the other crabs kind of grab onto you and like bring you down mm. but instead you need you, you need to work together to kind of lift uplift and Everybody. for right now especially since like we have such a huge like with dance, we have such a huge presence nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like when I even think about like, what is it, pr the Prince, uh, William, not the baby, where like oh, yeah, yeah. she was talking about like, oh, ballet, oh, yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And to see like so many dancers come out and say, hey, that's wrong, you know, and mm -hmm. support. Yeah. Like that was, that was really cool. So I think the more that we do that, like I'm sure we're gonna, all the obstacles that we face mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm we'll get through it together yeah i guess it yeah like being vocal about it too yeah like let not taking it anymore and like mm -hmm. just being able to express how you truly feel yeah kind of on that same vein like yeah like i really feel like a lot of dancers like backed that whole situation and i and you know it's such a subculture right like or a sub community or whatever that other people don't understand and so maybe it is our job as a community to educate others about mm -hmm. you know what is a dancer and like what isn't a dancer or you know what I mean like just like nothing isn't a dancer right like so yeah. just kind of normalizing again everything um that we already know to be as normal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I know when I think about like the SoCal community I mean I haven't gone there but to hear stories as well when we think about like going to classes and like you know it is a competitive like, yeah. atmosphere down mm -hmm. there right so when someone else is doing well you can just feel the tension of like people being like no I need to do better whereas here it's more lax. We're just like, you did good. Great job. <laughs> you know, yeah. five the more I think you know? about it, maybe it's so competitive down there because there's so many people yeah. that are pursuing the same dream that you kind of have to find ways to stick out. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. the idea or the hope is that you stick out through your dancing, through your 
you know skills instead mm. of like just how you look yeah. um again i'm i'm a firm believer of like if you look, feel good you look good so yeah. that's the way that you, like, you carry yourself i mean look at these like young 11 year old dancers who oh are like God. sometimes better than the adults you know what i mean yeah. like as us as a community um in our dance teams i think like in our when we do these competitions you know mm -hmm. we just kind of be extra mindful of really what we're presenting you yeah. know what message are we trying to convey out there and again like i was saying we need to be more about the dancing um and you sticking out rather than like oh because you look better basically it's, it's gotta be about like dance better you know what i'm saying oh yeah <clears throat> even if like let's say there is a sassy dance and the main center is like supposedly a female but if a guy dances it better like sassier then that sh that person should be casted too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think you yeah. know if it's not about like a certain narrative that you're trying to tell you right. know it's like whoever kills it better you know oh yeah so yeah anything else as far as like what we can do to improve as a community we do i mean with us here at the studio i mean even us bringing this up and talking about it again again i just want to really emphasize the voice our voice because we we love to express ourselves um through dance and through video and stuff mm -hmm. i what comes to mind in my head is like the um there's nothing to do with dance well he danced in it um is eugene lee yang uh, of the try guys he came out um mm. through a dance video mm -hmm. interestingly so it's kind of almost weirdly the opposite where someone who's so personal so personality based is expressing through art um maybe us as artists need to express in other ways as well um just so that our voice is heard um because if we don't talk it's you know no one can hear it <laughs> yeah, yeah. right and i was thinking about like sorry that um you know the crab mentality crab bucket mentality yeah i was thinking the kind of the opposite you know those like when ants can like hold on together to like make a raft oh and stuff yeah and stuff we to, need to be that like we, we gotta be that we gotta so stick together and, and then survive this crazy world you know <laughs> it's hot out here like yeah, yeah. that ant ant mentality ants. and no one gets left right. behind right yeah when an no. ant dies the ants come back to grab them and oh. take them home <laughs> that is true well, that's true. kind of <laughs> I think about that like do the ants on the bottom like drown like, I don't know. They don't? Okay, cool. <laughs> Someone off, off camera saying no. So, all right. <laughs> um, what's it called? I'm trying to gather my thoughts because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, yeah. So, basically, as a community, as a studio, like, being heard and stuff. Another thing for me is basically go out there and live your life <laughs> and like you. you know these insecurities mm -hmm. and stuff like it gets in the way you know and like who you could really be and um what you can do yeah. i was just thinking about like if you know how hard it is to take class because mm -hmm. of that fear when yeah. literally you just need to go in there you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's like sometimes we need to uh put that aside of course we can't ignore it i think mm -hmm. that's something to look deeper into but you know, go out there and have fun <laughs> and take class and stuff. You know what helps as well is just getting to talk to other dancers oh, around yes. you. Mm -hmm. Maybe yes. that's also a thing, like dancing among strangers. It's kind of like, okay, well, this person looks intimidating. And I'm dancing next to them. They're dancing so good. So maybe like taking that, like in Monday night workshop when we give high fives and everything, I feel like that kind of gives you, it, it refreshes you, you know, mm. and it, it kind of takes the like, oh, you're this enigma of a dancer and you kind of let your guard down because you're just like i know this person they're cool we're dancing together we're having fun mm -hmm. and you can dance right. off those vibes as well like and break so, the ice and stuff yeah that's important because i think every, everyone can meet so in their head that yeah. like they forget that you have this whole support system around you mm -hmm. and it's not that crazy you know what i mean at the end of the day we're a community mm -hmm. it's dead. <laughs> so, um, one love all dance is that that quote from maxed out I don't yeah know. oh yeah <laughs> it's true um so let's take another moment to hear about hear from our audience again we asked what are your dance insecurities and we want to discuss what we all have to say about it and open up a positive space regarding these insecurities um <laughs> <laughs> taking it to instagram do 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 cole cole schmoll 
said that oh. he's insecure about re- re- reusing moves in a choreo. Oh. Cole, he's an amazing yeah, he's teacher, awesome. choreographer. Yeah, Kevin, you choreo the most out of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Like, well, it's kind of like, I kind of learned to laugh about it because I think it just almost comes as a, um, almost a signature versus like a, like a insecurity of mine. Like, I, I turn a lot and I do a lot of like, I guess, head things. I do a lot of, I touch my head a lot. Like that's like my thing. But um, I don't know, I just learned to accept that that's kind of just my style and stuff. If my body wants to move that way, I'll do mm-hmm. it. And if I want to try to experiment and be like, actually, you know what, for this move or this part of the song, I don't want to touch my head. I want to touch my knees, right? <laughs> like, and so like, might as well try something else, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but I think at the end of the day, like, you have a style, right? And dance, there's there is somewhat of an underlying, like, people using the same moves. Like, we can't, you know, trademark a pot of beret. Like, everyone's gonna do that. Like, so if you do it, is it stealing? No, it's just kind of taking these building blocks and interpreting it the way that you do. Mm-hmm. I think like almost thinking about it as instead of the specific move that you're doing, it's more about like how you're interpreting the music. So the musicality, the timing, um, what the texture is behind that move. A pot of you could do it like 10 million different ways um, based off of the song, right? So um, maybe experiment a little bit more with that. But if you're doing the same move over and over again, just, I don't know, just accept it, right? And just like say, this is what my body wants to do. (laughs) It's like, you know, a word in sentences and paragraphs, like, there's not like a billion words out there maybe there is but like you know you're gonna have to come across the same word when you're retelling a story so it's really about the context of where that move is Mm -hmm. and using it to enhance like your narrative basically but yeah um like what kevin said it's your style own it basically is what he's saying Mm -hmm. (laughs) next question Motivate Gabe. Hey, Gabe. Hey, I'm Gabe. insecure about falling behind in progress in my group of friends. Oh. I wonder if that's in dance or in life because, you know, they're both equally as Applicable. scary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they might go hand in hand yeah, a little that's bit. True. Kim, what do you got to say? Falling behind with your group of friends. Um, I think it just goes to, to say, like, everyone has their own different timeline. You know, like when, when I think about real life, right? At this age, everyone's accomplishing different feats, right? Like we're thinking about people are getting married and having babies and all that. <laughs> well, like with dance, yeah, we're always gonna have different journeys. Sometimes they might align and sometimes they don't. I feel like it's hard. Yeah, for sure it's hard to not feel those insecurities of wanting to compare yourself to your friends. Like we've been dancing the same amount of time, but you're going much further than I am. Um, I think it's okay to have those feelings, mm-hmm. but I think maybe think about, okay, like this is where I'm at. What's my goal? You know, what's my end goal for myself, right? I'm sure those other people have their own set of goals and they're accomplishing at, at, different, um, at different times, but it's, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, I guess I'm trying to say is just, yeah, the insecurities are okay, but focus on yourself. Yep. You know, that's the best that you can do for yourself, you know, and just motivate yourself to- Motivate to, Gabe. Yeah, <laughs> motivate Gabe. Stay motivated. I you think know? that if you want to look to find the silver lining, yeah. um, it's good that you have people that you look up to, mm-hmm. that you want, that motivates you. You know yeah. what I mean? If it, I think, think of it more of as like, oh, I'm, I'm not, it's not about, oh, I'm falling behind. Yeah. It's about, oh, like, they're doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Let me do my thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, that's, like, I actually would rather surround myself with people who are Motivate. motivated, motivated and ambitious. Yeah. And, like, if I'm falling behind, then that's just me that needs to, like, go out there yeah. and kind of do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you think about it like mm-hmm. that. So, yeah. Perspective. From... I cannot say this. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, S R I G A Y A T R I S U N D A R says she's insecure about the way I groove. 
Oh man, groove is so hard to teach. That is. Yeah, like it's like you you don't even technically teach it. Yeah. You just have to like guide someone on how to feel it. Like, mm -hmm. and that that's so hard. Like, it's easy to make shapes and stuff, but yeah. groove it's like definitely it's still a struggle for every dancer because there's so many different types of grooves mm -hmm. that like I don't even have all of them down you know I think so people when, groove differently yeah it's that's like true a too. person like it's it's as if it's like it's like your swag yeah. <laughs> yeah. everyone's got different swag and it's like I'm not gonna have the same I'm not groove as Kevin or Kim like they got their own grooves you kind of just got to be comfortable with yourself mm -hmm. I think maybe the insecurity is coming from because you don't look like the, uh, this other person yeah. that is doing that groove, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's ways to practice grooves too. Yeah. Um, there's some, some, I guess, structure to it, um, to certain ways of how to explore that type of movement. Because the thing about grooves is that it's not a picture, it's, it's, yeah. it's actually a movement. So you have to like understand what your body is doing in order to achieve what it is and then start feeling good in that motion mm -hmm. so it's like a multi-layered step and yeah. again it's it's just always going to be like hard to find yeah i think it always stems from what makes you feel good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yeah and that's different for everybody yeah exactly mm -hmm. so um, maybe she hasn't found it yet maybe so maybe think, keep well, looking that's a fun keep journey mm -hmm. <laughs> so there this one came up a lot so there's multiple people that i'm going to shout out but um retention so a lot of people uh -huh. here are insecure about forgetting the dance mm -hmm. um dance move while the song is on um retention in general and other yeah making sure that i'm doing the right moves the right way mm -hmm. oops oh, so <clears throat> retention in general so yeah. learning about retention there's different ways because i we were researching this the other day um there's different ways to learn different ways to teach the, you can be a visual learner auditory learner and, you know that's the most basic way i can say it through dance there's so many different ways to teach you know mm -hmm. you got mm -hmm. your verbal cues you got your visual cues um I forgot the last one but kinesthetic <clears throat> kinesthetic great so i think like first of all if you forget that's okay mm -hmm. <laughs> um it's not a test that you know maybe it is a test for yourself but you got to figure out where you you last left off and kind of push one more step further yeah. each time and i think you also got to figure out what way do you learn best like is it repetitive repetitiveness is it listening to the music mm -hmm. attaching those moves to music is yeah. it watching before you actually do it, you know? Mm -hmm. For example, me, I have, when the choreographer does it for the first time of during the class, I have to watch it before I do anything like twice, before mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because then if I'm trying to copy, then my brain's not doing its process, what it usually does, so that's for me. Um, there's another tip that Kevin gave me. You were teaching teens the other day. Mm -hmm. And you said, think about where do you mess up all the time? Mm. Oh, yeah. And then just think about that move and get past it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I definitely said that to my teens um, this past week. Um, I also think, like, if I were, was able to teach more, I would definitely tell them to, like, just start chunking it and put, mm. actually putting them together. So instead of thinking about it as, oh, I have to learn, like, 20 million eight counts mm -hmm. and stuff, like, just think one eight count. Okay, that's section one. Mm -hmm. So you really only have to think of four moves or like four sequences right versus like 32 counts right like so think of it as that way like kind of chunk sections and choreographers uh, a lot of good choreographers that actually um teach they teach it in sections yeah so like just remembering like okay that's that section then put it in the library and then go back to the next one mm -hmm. i think focusing on what they're teaching at that moment right now is going to help you remember that part and yeah. then yeah and then a lot of times if you're actually struggling with the beginning if you don't remember the beginning then the choreographer will take note of that and review it a little mm -hmm. bit so yeah. it's kind of their goal um to generally make sure that you guys are still having a good experience in your class hopefully 
that's a tip also for people who are trying to be better teachers also <laughs> yeah. like just think about like how your class is in terms of like remembering the other stuff so mm -hmm. you know and like go ahead Kim when you guys think about your dance classes that you've danced in like you've probably had um, experiences with retention right mm -hmm. um, where do you think in that general area of the dance class do you find your retention slipping Swindling. Would you say in the second <laughs> second half or it's like right it's at the end yeah right yeah. at the end depending on the choreo too mm -hmm. like if Monday night workshop is probably really hard um because it's, it's such a long class uh -huh. mm -hmm. we teach a lot um usually yeah that's where I start pulling off like near the end you know and yeah. that's normal I feel like um and if you think about it like the retention it's such it's like an hour at most 90 minute class like mm -hmm. oh yeah it's people just have different rates of learning yeah if you can't if i think it's about really what you do after the class you know yeah for sure because because retention retention actually means like like long-term retention you know what mm -hmm. i mean i have very bad long-term retention <laughs> like i learn fast but then i forget easily mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> do you guys re re revisit the choreography that you've learned oh yeah and just try to see if you can get through it yeah, like yeah definitely. i yeah. think so uh, yeah. and usually it feels better after class yeah so oh, i yeah, think definitely. it's that expectation that you have to like get it perfectly mm -hmm. that's like try to avoid you know yeah so this has been real fun <laughs> <laughs> and we'd love to talk about it some more but unfortunately we have reached the end of the episode thank you guys for listening watching um we know that there are thousands of podcasts out there so we appreciate you tuning in right now mm -hmm. um we have a great season ahead of us uh with a lot of interesting topics new guests follow us on youtube Spotify, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, so you don't miss out. Thank you to Kevin and Kim and all the production team that's here today. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm Donita, and this is Between Us Foos. Catch us next time. Bye.